Remove the baseboard and out comes the pattern of half of the wheel to leave a perfect replica of itself in sand. Now the other half made in the same way. Then the two halves of the mould are joined together. The moulding boxes are clamped and our wheel is ready for casting. Molten steel looks hotter and is hotter than molten iron. In the steel foundry the ladle travels on a sort of overhead railway and when it comes opposite the mould the metal is released. A few hours to cool and the mould is ready for breaking open and so a wheel is born. To its making has gone 3,500 weights of the finest steel and all the skill and experience of the steel foundry men. After the machining has been completed, the wheels are mounted on the wheel press which joins them to the axle. In pressing wheels onto the axle, this machine exerts a pressure of 150 tons so that there is no fear that wheel and axle will ever part company. Next, the wheels are ready for tiring. Heating the tire, which is lying on the ground, causes it to expand so that the wheel center fits into it quite easily. At normal temperature, the tire is 1 16th of an inch less in diameter than the wheel center. As the tire cools down, it shrinks firmly and securely onto the wheel center. Our next job will be to provide the motion. The various parts of the motion, which can best be described as the moving machinery, start life in either the drop forge or the heavy forge. In the drop forge, the article being manufactured is stamped out in a shaped die. In the heavy forge, the article is shaped largely by the skill of the smith. These men are making a combination lever. A machine trims off the surplus metal and the job is finished. A connecting rod enters the heavy forge as a rectangular block of steel, weighing 1,200 weights. Eight tons of steel hammer descending on steel thuds solidly. The iron floor trembles at the impact. Owing to the intense heat, the men wear these strangely looking caps to keep the sweat out of their eyes. Hand, eye and hammer work in perfect unison shaping, squeezing, forcing the reluctant metal to the will of the hammer and to the will of the men of the forge. Five times into the fire, five times under the hammer. The maximum amount of work must be done at each heat to complete this amazing achievement so that the men of the forge must be both quick and sure. Who will say now that the day of the craftsman is no more? Machining the flats is the first operation in the machine shop, a process that gives a glass-like surface to our rods. To reduce the weight of the rod, the sides are fluted, and this is the machine that does the job. Circling the ends, as it is officially called, seems to provide a fitting description of this operation. Holes have to be bored at either end of the rod to take the bushes. 
Now in the erecting shop, the piecing together of those parts which have been so carefully wrought in the various shops. Heat is precious and has to be conserved and this is how it's done. The aluminium alloy file is quite a recent discovery in this lagging process. It has been found to possess remarkable heat resisting properties. After the fixing of the lagging sheets, the boiler has to be mounted on the frames waiting to receive it. One of the most amazing sights is the way heavy loads, even the most awkward and cumbersome ones, are slung about the works. A screech from the overhead crane, grappling hoops descending out of the air en route, and almost before you can say knife, a loader from 50 tons up to a complete engine is whisked away to a new position. Number 6207 is really beginning to look like an engine. You don't put wheels on a locomotive, you put the locomotive on the wheels. It is wonderful to see this huge load handled with such ease and placed exactly where it is required. Here she comes, finest of her class, pride of the line and of the men who built her. Over 90 years of experience have gone to her making. Lifeless as yet, steel hawsers draw her slowly into the open. Soon she will be rushing over the main lines at 80 miles an hour, hauling trains of 500 tons or even more. She's off. A thousand men have served her in the making. How many thousands will she serve during her life on the line? Here's to you, number 6207. Good luck and good running.